they go in. Left field and deep. The wall, and it was in his glove and over the wall. He's saying fan interference, too. Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. We're going to discuss this fan interference play from the Royals-Rockies game. If you're familiar with our prior discussions on these types of plays, this will be a nice refresh. Let's review this. Review on a potential home run in left center field. We saw this earlier Colin with Jacob Stallings. First and foremost, let's establish the umpire responsibility for this play. We have the left fielder ranging to the foul line side toward his right. That is the third base umpire's responsibility with no one on, no one out. And we see the third base umpire is the umpire that is part of the review with the chief. So that tracks. Results are being there you go. Well That's all the, you need right there. Yep. Well into the field of play. Spectator interference occurs when a spectator or object thrown hinders a player's attempt to make a play on a live ball by going onto the field or reaching out of the stands and over the playing field. We're saying no home run on that. That's not, I mean, who knows? Replay will, will have its own mind. But. Now we need to define the playing field, which ends at the base of the wall at the warning track and extending perpendicularly upwards. That means that this yellow line or top of the wall, in this case, it's painted. It doesn't have to be painted. The top of the wall is considered baseball's neutral zone. We have another video talking about that. And what that means is it can be both. If the ball hits the top of the wall and bounces out, it's a home run. If the ball hits the top of the wall and bounces back into play, it's alive and in play. The top of the wall is the only portion of the field that can be treated two ways for the same piece of real estate. Oh. Oops. Uh-huh. I think we oh have boy. an issue. Yeah, we do. The penalty for spectator interference is to nullify the act. If the umpire believes the fielder would have caught the ball absent spectator interference, the umpire shall award the out. Home oh. run! Oh. Oh. Wow. The problem lies with clear and convincing evidence proving the fan actually reached out over the playing field when he hindered the fielder. So for the Colorado game, we're looking at a fan that possibly interfered with the fielder but the contact may or may not have occurred over the actual playing field. At first glance, this looks like super obvious fan interference. 39 degrees, that fan's got no shot. But if you've watched hockey reviews, you know what's coming next. Here's the puck, it, it appears to be in, but as we get closer and we use the angle and we get right over top, we see in fact that the puck is actually still touching the red line. This is the parallax effect and a real confounding variable for when we are doing replay reviews from an angle. Notice the replay in Colorado looks from a position where the fence line is not a straight line that you'd expect if the camera was indeed on the fence itself. It's at a skew, which means that the camera was behind the fence line, whether it's broadcast camera, just center field cam. So what that effectively is, we are so zoomed into the area that due to parallax and the angle that is at work, there could be an illusion that makes it appear like a super obvious fan interference, fans clearly reaching over and the contact occurred over the field of play, where we, due to parallax, don't know for sure whether that did or did not happen. And because of the parallax effect, because of the uncertainty that this causes, because we're looking at contact not on the fence line, but over it, just like a hockey puck, because the red line is painted below the ice surface. Because it's not clear and convincing, replay goes with call stands. Upon review, the call in the field stands a home run. Wow, that is awesome. Wow. Oh, folks. So yeah, parallax. If you don't know it, now you do. And that's why some calls that might look obvious on first glance end up with stands, because parallax creates uncertainty, which deprives clear and convincing video evidence. Maybe we just don't know the rule well enough, but even Tolly is like, what? Wow, he said the same word. Well, no, you guys know the rules just fine. I'm gonna roll my thank yous to my Patreon credits here and the YouTube memberships and the Discord boosters. Thank you so much, links in the description, all that, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for this question. Parallax is a really, really interesting part of replay. It's sort of you open a can of worms when we do replay, when those things get added to sports, and you realize that because the cameras are so good with the zoom lens and all of that, the angles sort of get even more distorted, and it creates illusions of things happening that don't actually exist. 
Well, Lavello is looking to challenge this. Yeah, and I'm not talking about a spilt beer being the issue. I'm talking about contact. From that and I look at this, I think, oh yeah, that probably was fan interference, but I can't prove it because of the parallax effect. How we need to time it. So the question becomes, where were the fans' hands? Thanks for the question. We'll see you online at CloseCallSports.com.